Welcome back to the ASUG News Studio. My name is Tom Welgum, co-editorial director of ASUGnews.com. Well, we are very happy to have Jim Call in the house today. He is uh, going to talk about a real interesting topic. I didn't see anyone else talking about this topic. Uh, Jim is BI Education Manager for Zurich North America. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. You had your presentation earlier today. I did this uh, morning, about an hour, an hour and a half ago. So yeah. you're fresh off it. Oh, it's all still in your mind, all the questions. Oh, it's, it's been fresh in my mind for the past year, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk first about your job, BA, BI Education Manager. What is that exactly? And then tell us a little bit about your company. Yeah, so as opposed to, I work for Zurich Insurance. Uh, we are uh, commercial insurance, uh, started in Switzerland in 1872 or so. We've actually been in the U.S. for 100 years, celebrating oh, wow. our 100-year anniversary. Um, and we've had uh, business objects in the organization for um, about 14, 15 years now. Okay, wow, so tried and true, gotten your money out of it, and uh, used, yeah. used a lot. Yeah, well, see, that's the interesting thing. I'm not sure we're getting our money out of it anymore. We've mm -hmm. had it for so long that we're trying to refresh the, the effort, and. Uh, in, the, in the move of getting people off desktop intelligence to web intelligence, it's a good opportunity to get people's skills uh, up to speed again. So, so my role is really around um, uh, user uh, engagement, mm -hmm. user enablement for training and performance support, and, uh, and user adoption in general, making sure they're using the tools. Okay. Yeah. So your presentation was about uh, Desky, desktop intelligence, a very... Right. It, it comes out of nowhere, a lot of forums, like the passion, like, actually, most of the time against Desky, but curious about what, for the first off, we'll start, what is Desky? Well, how do you guys use it at Zurich? Right. So desktop intelligence is really the, uh, the, real, the original business objects. It's a okay. client tool uh, that's used for the query reporting and analysis prior to having the web-based web intelligence environment. Mm -hmm. okay. and so um, as uh, we've evolved with business objects, uh, at Zurich, we have moved a lot of users to the web intelligence environment, okay. and all the new users that come on will go to web intelligence, okay. but we've got a lot of uh, users that are still using the, what we call now, the old platform, mm -hmm. the old tool. Right. Okay? And we, you know, we joke about it and we're equated to uh, floppy disks and 8-track <laughs> tape. Sure, it still works, <laughs> right. right? But you're missing out a lot by not moving to the new platform and the new environment. Right. So. What are those things that they actually are missing out on? Um, well, I think some of the uh, the scalability, well, some of it's on the IT side for us. Sure. I mean, we want, from the admin side, people to move to the more central, stable, uh, scalable environment, okay. of the, the web-based environment. Uh, but for them, they're just missing a lot of new functionality, like, um, you know, things as simple, it can be simple as fun as input controls, mm -hmm. right? Or, um, you know, just some of the new charting capabilities and, and uh, you know, it's just it's just time for people to not only, uh, from a technical, for technical reasons, move off the old platform, sure. but to renew their skills again. Um, and uh, now that web intelligence is really just about up to parity with the old desktop intelligence, there's really not much reason for them not to move. And SAP, their stance on desktop intelligence is they would like it to go to the wayside as well. Well, that's kind of why we needed to move this uh, move this forward in version four, which we plan to move to in the spring. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is no room for desktop intelligence anymore. They're not supporting it on that platform. So we um, need to move right. if we want to go to the new platform, which, which we do. Right. Um, and everybody knows that. The challenge is there's really no uh, direction or resources on how to actually execute. There's no guidebook, there's no... Move, right, there's no playbook for how to, how to do it. Everybody you know, talks about needing to do it and wanting mm -hmm. to do it, but um, how to actually do it uh, was kind of the focus of my topic today and how we attacked it. So let's yeah. hear it. So what were the first initial steps that you decided to do? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it wasn't really anything uh, crazy or, 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 or novel. I, I went out and first talked to the, uh, talked to the users. I, I should mention I, I joined Zurich about a year and a half, two okay. years ago maybe. Um, so I was kind of the fresh new guy in the organization where you know, a lot of these users had, had, um, had been around a while. I um, am a former business objects employee too, oh, okay. so I myself had uh, plenty of experience with desktop intelligence. I knew the, you know, the positives of it, I knew the challenges of, of getting off desktop intelligence, and I knew the evolution of web intelligence from a couple years ago to where it is today. Sure. All right? And I know that a lot of the old perceptions of web intelligence still are there mm -hmm. in that you know, we didn't have a fraction of the function functionality relative to Desky as as it does now. Okay. So, um, 
the, uh, how we, so ba I talked to users first off. Okay. I said, why are you still using Dusky when we have these, uh, you know, when we have web intelligence, which is a lot easier to use. Um, uh, there are features that you don't have. Uh, and we, from that, formulated uh, an action plan and then just started executing on that action plan. What were their answers? I'm just curious as so to we, the range yeah, of... Yeah, based on their answers, we, we actually put people into five buckets. And based on the, on the, the or five you know, general issues. First one was they you know, didn't know that web intelligence could do pretty much everything that desktop intelligence okay. could at this point. They're thinking of the old web intelligence from a couple of years ago, which had a fraction of the functionality. Um, and so, for that group, we just did a lot of communication and education efforts. We put uh, webinars out there, we put a self-serve education portal out there, uh, we had an email box set up uh, for questions, um, you know, we had uh, open Q&A sessions, all that kind of stuff, to, to really educate people on, on how to do that. The second group was people who uh, didn't even use web intelligence or, or desktop intelligence, but consumed the reports. Oh, okay. So they were using reports in an old format because they've been using those reports for you know, 10, 15 years, and they just... That's the way they did you know, it. That's the way they did it. And so that, again, was just as simple as um, an education effort. To push out and say, hey, instead of using these reports, you should use these reports instead. Okay? And then, once we saw that um, those efforts were successful, we started to remove the old format, Desky reports. Hmm. Um, so those were really more of uh, um, awareness efforts more than anything. Non-technical, that were e pretty easy to knock those, those kind of things out. Um, the next thing was really people who, uh, users who said they really didn't have time to do it, to, to right? I mean, I just don't have time to convert all these reports. And, uh, you know, we attacked that but just by laying out how they should go about converting these reports. Didn't mm -hmm. take much time. Right. You could, um, you know, you convert it, you can copy an existing one, you can, do you even need it anymore? Right. You know, that type of thing. So. We, we asked the users to, in, to kind of evaluate their own usage and, and, and go from there. Um, a lot of times I would just have them send a report to me and I would shoot back to them and say, it'll take you 10 minutes to do this, this, and this. That's all you have to do. Are we talking so, about hundreds of reports, thousands of reports? In, we're in talking aggregate? about, so in our business objects enterprise environment, we've got about 5,000 users. Okay. Uh, about a quarter of those, you know, about 12 to 1,300 of those, uh, use, actually use desktop or web intelligence, okay. power users. Um, and there were, you know, several hundred that were still using desktop intelligence. And from those several hundred, there were thousands of reports. Right. So that's not an effort that we took on centrally. That's an effort that we um, intentionally pushed out to the individual users. We asked them to evaluate their use of these documents. Uh, we gave them resources and support on how they could change sure. over uh, or, you know, convert the documents they needed, et cetera. So. Was there any category of you can pry it out of my cold dead hands? <laughs> so that's a, yeah. Those are the last kind of the last <laughs> two categories where we have uh, as much as we don't care for. We have a large group of people. I shouldn't say large, a significant group of uh, of people that um, were running reports, or I should say, we're running queries only to then dump the data to Excel. Right. So they're only using a fraction of the tool anyway. Right. Part of that was an education effort. You don't have to do all that. In fact, it's easier to do this stuff in web right. intelligence. Um, we did run into some, we had a couple users that had technical issues because they were used to pulling so much data out of web intelligence that there were export limits on the server I see. that we they don't, don't have those limits on their own client machine. Right. So we put some, you know, some limits on that and we just figured out other more efficient ways to get them the data that they needed outside of business objects. Uh, out of outside of business objects enterprise, mm -hmm. um, and then the last group is really functionality that they were using in desktop intelligence. You know that that two percent of functionality that is not in web intelligence I yet, see. and so we just had to figure out some alternatives right. for that. Whether it was you know using crystal reports instead, or using um, you know writing some JavaScript to get around VBA macros or something that they might still be using. Right. So, but once we put we're able to put these uh, you know users and their issues in these different groups. It's much easier to attack them, and we found that we could knock out a lot of issues with just some simple education and uh, steps. Right, because it seems like in, in, in total that would be a lot. Like, wow, it could be overwhelming. Like, That's look at all these exactly people. That's exactly what right. it was at the beginning. And once we kind of, uh, you know, did a little triage and put people in the buckets, we were, act, you know, able to knock out 95, 98 percent of wow. the usage uh, with some, you know, like I say, some simple, simple communication, awareness, training, support.
So is that is the number at zero today, or is this an ongoing uh, project? Not quite, but we uh, the we've got a couple of technical things that we're still trying to work out. Mm -hmm. um, it really comes down to though uh, two groups: the users that will ignore our warnings and mm -hmm. say. I don't know what they're saying to right. themselves, but it's not important for, uh, enough for them to to right. uh, to want to do anything about, uh, and we can't do anything about that. Right. We'll get those people shouting when we turn off Desky and you know a couple right. of the Desky servers in a couple of weeks, right. and uh, those issues for which we're still trying to figure out technical solutions. Right. Right. And so uh, schedule to next spring, I think you said to upgrade to. VF4. Right. We've already got our sandbox up. We're planning on our communication and training plans to have that, um, that complete uh, toward the end of Q1 next year. What would be your one or two best pieces of advice to someone back where you were months ago when mm -hmm. you were just starting this? Yeah, well I think, um, I, I think it's uh, number one to kind of segment. Mm -hmm. I should say back up a step. Number one, attack it now before you need right. to. Right. Tackle it now um, and uh, be serious about it and be aggressive about it. Because mm -hmm. that's the, kind of the only way you get through to users. Right. Um, you have to tell them that there's a, uh, a you have to tell them what the benefits are. Sure. Um, and you also have to, you know, it's pretty standard change management, uh, management stuff, but you have to uh, let them know what the costs of not upgrading are for them, right? Uh, in that they're going to lose access to the data that they've come to depend on for, right. for 10 years. So they need to take some kind of action. We'll help them through. That. You didn't get a reputation or anything around the company as the guy who was trying to get rid of Desky, right? Oh, here he comes, he's going he's gonna to no, rip I my actually, Desky report. I actually out. did, and I, <laughs> I, I kind of relish that, though, because uh, once I, uh, you know, once you educate them on the benefits and, um, you know, you equate it to something like an 8-track tape, right. right? Then they kind of feel behind the times and like right. they should catch up. And once you paint the, paint the picture for them of what they're going to be gaining instead of losing, uh, it's, it's not, a, not a real tough sell. You just got to keep on communicating that. Right. Well, Jim, thank you very much. We appreciate you stopping by. Sure. Thanks for having me. For more interviews with ASUG members and SAP newsmakers, check out asuganline.com as well as ASUG TV on YouTube. And thank you very much for watching.